Today I want to give you some tips on how to effectively work with photographs in Fusion. So photographs typically have high resolution if they come from a good camera. Uh, very often they don't have the same aspect ratio as our timeline image. And quite often because we are working with video, right, we want to animate them a bit do some form of transform, some compositing or so. Here are some basic ideas on how you can get started. The photos you see here are part of a Resolve mini contest that I am launching right now. So if you are watching this as it comes out, then have a look at the contest page, take part in the contest. You get those images and other images to work on, maybe create the same effect or a similar effect as I'm showing here and submit it for a chance to win something. So have fun with the contest if you're participating and here's the tutorial. So when you are dragging any images into the timeline, first of all in Resolve it depends on your timeline settings, what happens to the image and you see the timeline says mismatched resolution scale entire image to fit, which is in this case coming from the project settings. If you change that, for example stretch to all corners, see that the photo comes in in a very different way. So probably when you work with photographs it's probably a good idea to keep the default setting and not mess with this. So let me go back to the uh, scale to fit. So from here on you can of course start right away from the edit page with the usual edit tools. So if you like you can use the edit transforms uh, to, to resize your photos or use the inspector where you see the zoom and position. So these are all the usual edit effects, right? And sometimes I just do that for preview purposes to create something quickly. For example, if I want to do a simple composite, I might uh, start with something like this, you know, position the bird here, um, perhaps even put some, some effects on it and so on. And I get my preview here and if you want to continue in Fusion for some reason, let's say you want uh, to use a blue screen keyer in Fusion in order to remove the blue sky from the bird, you can go to Fusion by selecting all the clips that are part of your work and then do a right click new Fusion clip and that will encapsulate anything you have done in the edit page or even in the color page, encapsulate all of that and send it over to Fusion. So in this case I have a Fusion clip and you can uh, right click open in Fusion page or just head over if the timeline ruler is over it. And then you see a media in one and media in two which gives you the output from edit and color as it was before you created that Fusion clip. And this approach is fine, it just has one significant disadvantage. You are locked in with the resolution as it comes out of the edit page. So if you see here, if I move the viewer a little bit you see 1920 by 1080 is my timeline resolution uh, in this project and this is the resolution I have here on the media out but also on the media in. So these are scaled down and I'm locked in with whatever I've done in the edit page. If I want to change this again in Fusion, let's say I want to enlarge it again, so you see that the bird here um, now gets, gets soft even though it was in much better resolution in the, the edit page. So I am locked into the 1080p resolution, in my case the timeline resolution. So in this case you don't take this approach, I will just take one image, in this case the mountain, and just head over to Fusion without doing anything in the edit page. And in this case you see I'm heading over with the correct image resolution, not the timeline resolution. I could still do edit effects, but those effects would be afterwards. So for example, if I want to zoom in like this, this has nothing to do with Fusion, it happens after Fusion. I'll undo this and in Fusion I work on the original image. So what about if you want to do transforms, camera animations and so on in Fusion? So in that case what I would probably do is first of all create myself a frame which matches the timeline resolution or at least the timeline aspect ratio uh, so that I, I have an idea of what's coming out at the end, right? So original resolution on the image is good but towards the media out this resolution will be made to fit the timeline as per the timeline settings. Even better would be if I could already see it the way it's coming out. Uh, so if I want that I will just create a simple background node. In the image settings set this to the correct settings for the timeline and in this case you see it's coming with the same resolution as the image because the fusion composition as a default resolution 
gets the resolution from your starting point and your starting point is like the first media in uh, which is coming from the edit page in this case this photo so it takes the photo resolution as the default resolution no problem with that uh, it's just something you need to be aware of knowing that i will for this background i will manually override it i will disable the auto resolution and just type in 1920 by 1080 and here i will just merge this image over and i merge it over the frame size that i'm using here so let me reduce the size in the merge and here i can can choose how i want to fit this image into the frame and how much i want to zoom all right i have my mountains towards the final 1080p resolution let me rename them mountains and now let me do the following let me just add a simple zoom and i could do that here in the merge but this is more like my final frame size so i like to separate steps out a little bit so i might add a transform here and use this transform maybe i call it a transform zoom and use this to create a zoom effect if you want to zoom the best thing is to place a pivot which is the center of your zoom so let's say i want to zoom towards these mountain peaks if i place the pivot there first then my zoom will go towards that pivot from and to that pivot so let me start with a zoom of one at the beginning at frame zero put a keyframe and then zoom in towards the end for example like this now with this i have a nice zoom on the background now let's talk a bit more about resolution and about performance so here in this case i am zooming in so i need the higher resolution of the mountains uh, what about if i bring in this bird so let me bring that in this also has super high resolution but even at the very end it will only be very small right so i will never need this bird in like this resolution um, so what can i do let me rename it i can use uh, the i can do the same trick that i did here i could use a background node let me just quickly copy just to demonstrate i copy these two nodes and just move the bird over a different background and here i have it on a 1080 background and in the merge node i can scale around and i could even change the resolution for example i could uh, decide to make it a bit uh, yeah, wider than high because that's the format of the bird and thereby I create an image with much lower resolution and if I want to do further processing on this image doing it on a lower resolution image is certainly beneficial. Another approach is to use here the resize node that's also a very um, flexible tool if you look at it you have here a width and a height and it will just squeeze the bird into that width and height unless you say keep frame aspect then it protects the frame aspect and you can lower or higher the resolution for the entire frame however you uh, need it so you can reduce it like this if you go to reset size it takes again the uh, incoming size from the, the original image as it goes into the resize node that's a way uh, sometimes i just want to temporarily reduce the resolution by a certain factor or even permanently like say cut the resolution in half or take a quarter of the resolution because i just eyeball it and say okay quarter of the size is enough and in that case i can use the resize node like this i can also calculate here right just divide by four uh, but i might instead choose to use a scale node shift spacebar scale there it is and here you have exactly that you just have a simple factor and by default the aspect ratio is fixed unless you unlock xy and you can just you know 0.25 for quarter resolution this is also something i do when i take images into 3d because if you add like an image plane for example and then you work in 3d in 3d you're using those as textures and they need to be loaded into gpu memory for example if you use the gpu rendering and working with extremely large textures especially if they're not needed at the end um, can really slow down 3d work but sometimes it's not even about the final rendering but just about quickly working and later 
rendering at the very end in final resolution. So in that case, just put a scale node in, start with quarter resolution or one tenth or whatever you need, and at the end you can just deactivate that node, and in 3D nothing will change because this image plane or projection or whatever you set up in 3D space, uh, the geometry doesn't change. Just a trick here. Scale node, resize node, final option is the crop node. Uh, if you want to remove some blue sky, for example, from this bird, you have here this X and Y offset and X and Y size. So uh, it always goes from the bottom left corner. So in this case, I would use the offset to move the bird like to the bottom of the frame and to the left of the frame, like that. And then to remove the rest, I use here the X size to bring that in, and the Y size to bring it in from the top. And now if I still want to reduce the resolution as well, I can't do that in this tool, so I might add the scale node afterwards and bring that into the viewer and reduce that however low I want to. So these are just some, some tricks to bring photos to the correct resolution. In this particular example, I want to create a zoom. Let me get back to that zoom. So how do I know how high the resolution is that I need? Well, at the very end, it needs to fit into the 1080p resolution, right? Um, so if I add this at the end, uh, then I could just scale it here with a scale node to the resolution that I need at the end. Only thing is probably I don't want to add it at the very end because now the mountains zoom but the bird doesn't zoom with the mountains. So that's obviously stupid. But nevertheless I see what I, I need because at the end it will be largest so I need see what resolution I actually need at the end. But now I will stick to that resolution and I will bring it in before the zoom because the zoom should impact the mountains and the bird. So I will bring it in here, bring in a merge node, bring it in here. And now the bird will, uh, yeah, probably be, let's see, let me remove this merge, clean up a bit. So now the bird is, where is it? It's down here because, you know, we are transforming and zooming and so on. So let me bring it in the right place. Now it's too large. Um, so I will need to scale down the bird so that it fits in here. What I have done until this point might be overkill if the zooming is all I want to do. Now let me add one operation where the resolution actually matters more than those transforms. If I'm only doing those, maybe it's not even necessary. But let me warp the bird a little bit. And the tool I want to use is from the Resolve FX library and it's called Warper. So let me add this via Shift Spacebar Warper. Here it is. I bring this into the flow. And how that works by default is you just um, click and drag and you can you know, warp the bird around and make different control points for that. Um, obviously not that extreme. Let me undo all of this. So instead I will just select the points and just click without dragging. And I will just select these as control points. So I don't want to warp the bird itself. So I use these to protect the bird. I won't move these. And the other ones here, those I will move around. And now I will keyframe this. I will put a keyframe at the end. And at the beginning, I will move these points and thereby automatically create a keyframe. You see, I will move the wings down a bit. Now, obviously, this type of puppeteering is very simplified and will not uh, replace a real bird, but you get a little bit of, of movement that way. So this way I have a moving bird and it's very efficient because I only work on a low resolution bird with the warper. I also need to remove the blue background. Um, for that, let me actually use the magic mask. With these things, you have to think about whether the resolution will add uh, detail or not. So for keying and magic mask and so on, sometimes having higher resolution and then after the keying, reducing the resolution might improve your edge results. So especially in, on uh, soft edges, you might get a better result if you first uh, do the extraction and then afterwards scale down. If you want to do it, you might do it here, right? So you can crop away what we don't need, then use the magic mask and then scale down. Um, or 
in many cases, it won't matter that much. Uh, you, you can also put it here where it will be more efficient. So let me actually put it here uh, where I give the maximum bird detail to the algorithm. Let me add a magic mask, magic mask. And since this is a photograph, but the tool is designed for video, I only need to work on one frame here. So I will go to frame zero and on frame zero, I will use the magic mask and let me show you left and right before and after and select strokes for the bird. And it might take a while uh, for the first stroke to calculate and then the magic mask is usually faster for the other ones. And let me see here what I'm getting and what I'm missing. So now I, I have the bird, maybe I do better, which uh, usually gives a bit softer edges. And now let's say I'm happy with the result. I don't want to track and compute this for every frame because it's a still frame, right? So there wouldn't be any point in it. Well, the tool doesn't know that this is a still frame. The tool just works like it works on video. Um, however, what I can do is after the magic mask, just freeze the frame. And the fastest way to do that is add a time, what's it called? Time stretcher time stretcher tool from the shift spacebar menu. Add the time stretcher, let me move things a bit. And this time stretcher is by default animated here, but I can just double click on the source time to remove the animation. And that will mean that the output of the time stretcher is always the frame that's indicated here, which is frame zero. This is a powerful tool which can do other things. I might cover it in a different video, but here that's all we need. And I have now my output fixed on all frames. So the magic mask isn't doing anything here. I'm not using it on the other frames, but I'm also not using the frames. So I'm using frame zero. The same trick can be used if you do paint or if you yeah, do any, uh, any type of effects where you don't want to think about all the frames, but you just work on one frame, fix it and you're done. Okay, let me look at my warper. So now this is starting to look uh, better without the blue sky. Zoom and warper combination is starting to look better. Now I can put a lot of uh, other effects in here, uh, but for any effect that I'm placing into the flow, I will think about, okay, do I need the full resolution? Can I work with less resolution? Like the warper I used on less resolution, no need. Uh, the magic mask I used on higher resolution, hoping to get better edge separation. Um, so you have, have those kind of thoughts and you have to think about how does the effect work together with the other transforms. So for example, in the preview in the beginning, I added a camera shake. Where would you add that camera shake? Well, a camera normally shakes more the more zoom you use because if it's handheld and you zoom in, then any shaking with the hand has more impact uh, when you zoom in and less impact when you're not zoomed in. So I would put that uh, camera shake before the transform, but of course after the merge so that the bird and the background shake together. So I would put it here, all right? Um, let's do it, camera shake, there you go. And there are other ways to make a camera shake, but you know, that's the idea. If you put binoculars over it, well, you can do it at the very end, right? Because that's just like an overlay, like a mask. I even used the effect which you find in the edit page and you can, can throw that over at the very end, just add it as an add-on effect on top of it. I hope you found this useful, especially when working with high resolution photographs, but of course some of the techniques apply to video as well. Give it a try and if it's March 23 while you are watching this video, then have a look at the contest and maybe you are creating a zoom effect with one of the photos that I provide in the contest. I'm looking forward to seeing your results.